Hi, and welcome back to another Wednesday car conversation, you guys. So, at the time of this recording, it is pouring down rain. And I mean pouring down rain. So that's what you hear. If, it's, if it sounds loud, as you can see right here on the window, it's just coming down. So y'all pray with me that once I'm done with this video and I go to get out the car, I'm not getting soaking wet. So today's topic is, it's difficult, but it's worth it. Let me say that one more time. It's difficult, but it's worth it. So I have this quote that I wanted to share with you guys by Theodore Roosevelt, and it simply says this, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. I have never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I have envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. Mm. Y'all, let me let me let me read that for you one more time. Again, this this is a, a quote by Theodore Roosevelt, and it simply says, "Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty." Let me put a pin right here because we're gonna unpackage this a little bit as we go along. You know, I. I kind of feel the same way, not necessarily because I don't I don't fully think that you have to have pain and suffering for everything in order for it to be great. However, this is this is how he felt. This was his quote and so, you know, that's fine. But then he goes on, he says, I never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. Let me stop right here. You know, I, first of all, I don't envy anybody. Let me just be honest about that. And the reason why I say I don't envy anybody is because there are going to be times when you see people and their lives look great, especially on social media, right? Their lives look absolutely amazing. But if you actually knew that person outside of social media then you would know their lives their lives are not all that they portray them to be so i don't envy anybody okay but i do take my hat off when i sit back and i think about people that had to to work hard that had to go over and beyond to prove themselves and and i will tell you who comes to my mind is lord i just i was just getting ready to say her name Harriet Tubman. She comes to my mind. This woman decided that she wanted to be free, that she no longer wanted to be a slave. And so she decided, look, I'm out. I'm done with this. Y'all can hang around if you want to, but I, I, I'm seeking freedom because I believe I was born for greater things than this. And then not only once she went and got herself free, she came back and got her sisters and brothers to help free them as well. And the thing is, is along the way though, some of them got scared because you know how we do. It's like, oh, I, I want to do this, but I'm kind of scared. And, and she had to say, no, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Mm -mm. You are not going back. See, because you go back, you're going to be tortured until you tell how you got away. You're going to be tortured until you tell who helped you. Where was this path that you took? So she couldn't allow folks to go back. But I love it that she said, no, I am tired. Enough is enough. I deserve better. I will have better. And not only did she have better for herself, but she also created better for other people. Mm, that's powerful. But I'll tell you who else I just thought about as well. I thought about, I thought about God. You know, when I think about the fact that, and, and, and let me say this, because I don't know what your religious beliefs or preferences are, and, but I'm, I'm only speaking on what I believe. But when I think about this man who came into this world knowing that his time was going to be limited to save me, to save you, to save other people, that's powerful. That's, that's powerful right there. He said, you know what? I, I have come here for a purpose and I'm going to do what my father has sent me here to do. And I can't even begin to imagine being nailed to a cross. Because you you, you remember the story where, where nails were driven through the palms of his hands as he hung up on that cross. And when he took his last breath for you and for me. That's powerful, y'all. That, that, that's powerful right there. 
So when I think about people like that who gave so much of themselves for me and for you, for us, that's a powerful thing. And it ties back into it's difficult, but it's worth it. It was difficult, I'm sure, to hang up on that cross knowing that at any time, you know, he could have, Jesus could have gotten down off the cross and freed himself at any time, but he didn't. He hung there because he knew he had a job to do. How many of us would have done that? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I could have. I really don't know that I could have because I'm not one for pain. But I think about also, like I said, Harriet Tubman. That woman gave her life to help free so many people that didn't even appreciate it. Probably weren't even deserving of it. And they were willing, willing to risk it all, to risk her life, her freedom, her safety, because they got scared. They wanted to go back. And she said, not on my watch, you won't. And the list can go on and on and on. I think about Les Brown. I think about how he grew up and he had a speech impediment. But he had people that he admired and he said, hey, I want to be like them. I want to go out and I want to speak to life into people. I want to motivate people. And I think about the people that said to him, no, you, you, you can't do that. You're not your twin brother, Leslie. I mean, a Wesley, I'm sorry. That, that, that's not your calling. And he had that one teacher that said to him, Mr. He said, do not. He said, Mr. Brown, don't you let anybody tell you that you can't accomplish your goals and your dreams. And that's all I want to leave with you all today is that it, while it may be difficult, it is worth it. And so I need you all to stay the course, continue to do what it is that you need to do. I think about my, my coach, Bob Yates. I think about how he's always been an entrepreneur. And he got the idea to start this coaching business. Or I'm, not, I'm not, sorry, not a coaching business, but he got an idea to start a business to help coaches, to, to, to groom them, to build them up, to be able to go out and do what it is that they wanted to do. And he, he got the idea to create a women in business network to help women business owners come together, network, and learn from one another. All of this started from an idea. Imagine if somebody had whispered in his ear and said, Bob, that's not going to work. Don't waste your time. Imagine if somebody came along and did that and he goes, well, yeah, you know, you might be right. Uh, let me just, I'll go on and do something else. Every now and then, every now and then, I think to myself, you know, Michelle, why do you even bother when I don't, my videos don't get the views that I would like for them to have, or they don't get the amount of comments that I would like for them to have, or, or any of that stuff. But then I say to myself, but you know what, Michelle, your videos are not for everybody. Your videos are for, for a small group of people. And my prayer, anytime I do a video is, Lord, let the people that need to hear what it is that I have to say, hear it. Let it resonate in their spirit. Let it encourage them to want to go on and do and be the best that they can be. Because my video is not for everybody. And it's just like, I'll share one more thing with you. It's just like I started out talking about how you see people on social media. And they're always traveling. You know, they're having such a great life. They they have all of this stuff. And you sit back and you think, wow. I work every day and I can't afford a nice car like that. I can't afford a home like that. I can't afford to go on vacations like that. And sometimes it can cause you to feel a little down. But let me tell you a little secret. Not everybody that you see posting that stuff on Facebook is really living large like that. Do you realize a lot of people, they are living the life that they want until they actually get it? Some to you, here's my here's my thing. You you have to believe it until you receive it. And so if you envision yourself living this great life that allows you to vacation wherever you want to, start posting pictures of places that you want to go. Now I'm not saying deceive people into believing that you are there or you get that you've been there. Don't do that now. But start posting pictures of, of those places you want to go. If there's a vehicle, a specific vehicle that you want to own. 
start, you know, posting pictures of that vehicle. And you keep believing that you're going to get it until you actually receive it. If you have dreams of your business growing and being huge and successful, honey, keep posting about your business. You know, hey, today was a great day in my business. Again, do not deceive people, but it's all right to say, you know what, today was a great day in my business. I am so thankful and, and all this other great stuff because what you're posting can help to motivate other people. But again, like I said, don't deceive people. Don't just tell out and out lies that you bring it in a thousand dollars a day in your business and you really are not. Don't do that. Because even though they may not know it, God knows you're lying and you know you're lying. So don't do that. But give people hope. All I'm saying is it's all right to believe it until you receive it. Mm. And so, and then he goes on to say, he says, I've envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. All the people that I talked about led difficult lives in some way, shape, or form. Harriet Tubman was a slave. Trust and believe she was probably beat at some point in time. She was mistreated. I can see her in my mind's eye out in the fields <clears throat> with the sun is at, at its highest point in the day, just beating down on her, baking her. No water to drink, but she was expected to pick cotton or whatever else it was that she was picking. I think about Jesus and how the people stoned him. They threw stones at him. They mocked him. They clowned, if you will. And he knew he was sent there for a purpose, so he had to stay the course, stay focused on why he was sent there. And remember who he was sent there to save. It wasn't about him. I think about Les Brown being told, told that he would never be able to, to go out here and speak and motivate the masses. But look at his life now. I look at Bob. And as he shares his story of all of these great entrepreneur opportunities that he ha that he's had over the years, and he stumbled upon this, or I should say he stepped out on faith to make this happen, and he's going places. His business is doing great. And he's still out here teaching and motivating other people to live their goals, live their dreams, to, to be the success that they want to be. And I look at myself under Bob's tutelage. I believe that I am actually going to go places and it makes me feel good. I can't stop smiling because I just think I'm, I'm so excited and I see it in my mind's eye. Again, I get into my vision book. I get into my prayer journal and I pray about these things. And as God begins to manifest them and, and make them clear to me, it just makes me even happier. So, again, I just want to leave you with the fact that it's difficult, but it's worth it. And I want to ask you, what is it in your life that's difficult, but it's worth it? You know, I think about just now, I don't know who this is for, but somebody is in a relationship. You're in a relationship that you've wanted to give up on a while ago. And you say, you know what, it's different, difficult living with this per with this person. It could be a spouse, it could be a significant other, it could be your kids, it could be a family member. But I think it's worth it for you to fight for it. Now, there are going to be times when you do have to just let things go. But I think for those of you that I'm talking about, it's worth it for you to, <clears throat> for you to fight for that thing. If you have a wayward child, you don't just give up on them. Some people do. Let me say, let me just keep it real. Some people do. But can I encourage you not to do that? Keep fighting for them. Keep fighting for that child of yours. And when I say keep fighting for them, I mean you go to bat praying for that child. You pray for them every morning. You pray for them at noon if that's your, your ritual to do that. And you pray for them before you go to bed. And if you don't know what to say, you just say, Lord, you know what my child stands in need of. Lord, keep them covered. Cover them with your goodness. Cover them with your mercy. Let nothing happen to them, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within them. Change their minds, Lord. Change their focus. That's all you need to say. You don't have to have fancy words. 
And that's not just for your, your child. It could be for anybody. It could be for a coworker. It could be for a neighbor, a church member, your pastor. It can be for whoever. Your co you, you, you see what I'm saying? Coworkers, I said all of that. Doesn't matter who it is. Don't give up on people. Because while it may be difficult, I believe it's worth it. And if there's something that God has placed inside of you, it may be difficult, but I need you all to stay focused and make that thing happen. Because somewhere, somebody is counting on you to do what you said you were going to do. Y'all, that's all I have. That's all I have. Thank you so much to my newest subscribers. Thank you so much to those of you that continue to support me and all that I do. Y'all, let me let you know a little secret. I've said that since my very first video. I didn't have any subscribers at all, but you know what? I was calling those things as if they were. I believe they were coming. And so I have always, even when I didn't have any subscribers, when I didn't have anybody supporting my channel, I still said it. You know why? Because I believed that it was going to come and I believed it was worth it. And so even now, I still say thank you because without you all, I couldn't do what I do. And I love each and every one of you to the moon and back. And y'all know my spiel. It's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Because I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to love you when you're going up. I'm going to love you when you're coming down. I'm going to love you when you're going in. I'm going to love you when you're coming out. But most importantly, I'm going to love you when nobody else even likes you. I'm going to love you when you don't feel like you have the love and the support from anybody else always know that I love you. And I may not know specifically what you're working on unless you choose to share that with me, but just know that I keep each and every one of you in my prayers. I pray for folks that I've never met. I pray and ask God to touch you and heal you where you need to be made whole. Fix what needs to be fixed. Bless you like you've never been blessed before. And a lot of you I have never met and probably will never ever get a chance to meet, but I keep you in my prayers. You know why? Because it's worth it. That's all I have. Until next time, take care.